Elf Quest, the original quest, issue two. Raid at Sorrow's End. Betrayed. Tricked into the wrong passageway by the vengeful trolls, the wolf riders confront not a promised woodland refuge, but a sun scorched scene of utter desolation. Butter, don't blame yourself. We all underestimated the treachery of the trolls. It's my fault, lad. If the truth be told, Pignos caught me off guard. They're fair, they would have tied me in knots for little that. My father had a rotten temper. Well, we can't stay in here forever. But it looks like we can't go back overland either. These cliffs are sheer and there's no getting around them. <sighs> I I guess the lodestone didn't bring us much luck, did it? You know, Skywise, even if we could go back, there's nothing left of the hull but ashes. Hey, look at that! No matter how it spins... It always ends up pointing in the same direction. Their dire predicament forgotten for the moment, Ooh. the Wolf Riders marvel at the Lodestone's newly discovered property. Oh, it's magic. Well, I'll be. One end points back the way we came, and the other end points... Cutter, I think it's a sign. The tunnel's sealed behind us. So whatever hope we have must lie. Out there, in that strange, empty land. Well, maybe it's not so empty. Surely the trolls never explored it. <laughs> not in that sun. Right. They led us here hoping we'd die of starvation and thirst. But there could be food and water beyond those hills. Couldn't there, Cutter? Maybe nightfall. Maybe. Skywise, will the sun set? Cutter asks. Yes. Answers his friend. That at least we can depend on. Then we will cross this land at the cool of night. Decides Cutter. The lodestone may yet bring us luck. Darkness comes at last, and with it, an unexpected bitter cold. The desolate, open spaces and infinite sky above are overpowering to these little folk who have dwelt lifelong in wooded shelter. Only Skywise does not flinch from the piercing brilliance of the stars. Only he feels more wonder than fear. Cutter! I think I've discovered the secret of the Lodestone's magic. Look up! There, see? The hub of the Great Sky Wheel. The only star that remains fixed while all the others whirl around it. See how it pulls at the Lodestone? I, I guess so. It now said the big rock we took it from fell from the sky. Could the Lodestone be a, a piece of that star? It could be. I'm going to mark one end so we can always tell our direction. Careful! You don't know what evil magic you may release! There's nothing evil in the stars, Cutter. Or in anything that comes from them. Shortly before daybreak, the wolf riders make camp, lacing their leathern cloaks together to form a shade. Hungry wolves, meanwhile, roam about in search of food, but the barren dunes yield precious little to sustain so many. As it must, sunrise comes, and soon the merciless sands are ablaze with an all-consuming heat. Though hardy and strong in their forest domain, the wolf riders have never faced extremes such as this. Great camp, it's time to move on. And that's the truth that Scar was. The heat has drained us all, and we've not enough water left to make one full skin. Don't worry, the lodestone will guide us. We've come a long way already, and we're holding up pretty well, considering. All except Redlands. 
He's not complaining, but I know that you and turned inside somehow. He may not last another day. By the wandering stars, am I imagining things? Scouter, get your hawk's eyes up here. There, in the distance. What do you see? Mountains! Cry, Scouter. Mountains! Praise the High Ones, soon we'll see trees again. Don't be hasty, Moonshed. Listen, all of you. We've sighted a range of mountains, but they're still a long way off. We've got to make our water last as long as possible. At the sight of his tribe's gaunt and weary faces, a grim resolve grips Cutter. The roots of the mountains alive. Even if it's my blood, they must drink. The night wears on in deadly silence. No one speaks, for words would only grate through parched throats, causing more misery. In all the vast, arid land, only the labored panting of the wolves is heard as Cutter's valiant tribe presses on. Dawn approaches. The wolf riders prepare to survive the day in the shade of a pillar of rock. The dunes are behind them, and now the stony desert floor presents an even harder path to cross. Mountains are beautiful in this light. So near, yet so far. We'll make it. We have to. For many, hope is all that sustains them through that second terrible day. And by evening, there is one for whom little hope is left. At Lance? Time to go. No. Cutter. You know as well as I that I must stay here. He can't ride my chief, and I won't leave him. Nightfall. Shh. It's decided. Forgive me. If I had killed that old man when I had the chance, none of this would have happened. We are hunters, Cutter, not murderers. It has always been our way to respect life. Please. I don't want that to change, no matter what happens. I'll come back for both of you, I promise. We'll be here waiting, Cutter. That is my promise. Oh. Hush, beloved. Oh! Wolf Riders! We face the final trial. When next we rest, it will be in the foothills at Sorrow's End. Sorrow's End, a name aptly chosen. For somehow, though two of the faithful wolves drop dead in their tracks, and several exhausted riders must be strapped to their mounts. The wolf riders reach the mountains. Among the rocks, there is shade, and here, Wonderfully strange plants, unlike any Cutter's folk have ever seen, seem to thrive without any source of moisture. Ow! Damn it! What? It's what? <laughs> Leave it to Cutter. He found us plants that sell their own water. Thanks. Moments later. Ugh! Cutter! Will you please collapse? You're entitled. Not yet. The juice from those sticker plants is not enough for us. <sighs> Alright. I suppose you won't sit still till you've found us a blasted waterfall. Cutter and Skywise prowl the rocky foothills and search for a hidden wellspring. For a moment, they separate as Skywise pauses to examine his sorely reddened skin. Sunburn is something new to him. If we must stay here a while, I'll have Moonshade to make me a shirt with a hood. This land is like a bad dreamberry vision. How can any creature bigger than a lizard survive here? Glancing from his exhausted tribe boat to the bleak horizon, Skywise shakes his head doubtfully. But at a mental cry from Cutter, all else is forgotten. Skywise, up here, quickly! What is it? What? <clears throat> Shh! Fuck. Okay. I can't believe it! Who could have known? Elves! Just like us! 
No, not like us, Skywise. This is more like humans than me. They have no wolves, no tree dens, and they live in the sun as men do. I don't trust them. You don't think they'd help us if we ask? We're not gonna ask. I learned a hard lesson from the trolls. From now on, the wolf warriors take what they need, and no reasons given. While Cutter makes his plans, the unsuspecting villagers go peacefully about their daily routine. How long will you torment me? Hayek, <laughs> <laughs> please! You'll make me spill the water! I have asked you to be my life mate. Any maiden here would say yes. Why pursue me, my arrogant one? Because you are the only one worth having. <laughs> You're holding me too tight. Let me catch my breath and I'll give you an answer. Very well then. I release you. Well, Lita. <laughs> yeah! Woo! It is true that desperation gives rise to desperation. Sometimes, sadly, even when there's no need. But the wolf riders know nothing of civilized ways. My bread! My fresh break bread! Or of trust for strange elves whose existence they had not even imagined. Never point a weapon, Black Hair, unless you know how to use it. <clears throat> Yet, though driven by savage hunger and half mad with thirst, Cutter is brought up short. By a pair of glittering eyes as green and as fresh as young leaves, the maiden stands rigid, fear and wonder playing across her exquisite features. <laughs> And Cutter suddenly knows a different kind of thirst, as he drinks in the sight of her. What? What do you want? Lita! As swiftly as they descended moments ago, the wolf riders sweep to Cutter's side, laden with all the food and drink they are able to carry. Uh, excuse me, but it doesn't look like you're carrying much water. Huh? Oh. I'll explain later. What? On higher ground. Recovering from their shock at the unexpected attack, the villagers prepare to retaliate. Someone tell me what has happened. I hear strange voices shouting. Barbarians sun touching them, riding huge fang beasts. They've taken me. My daughter, save her wreck. You must. That same moment, far away. Oh. I slept. The shadows have grown longer. As she rubs her eyes awake, Nightfall notices the tracks left behind by her desperate people. Wistfully, her gaze follows the trail until it disappears in the fume royal distance. The mountains beckon and taunt from afar. Cutter, my chief friend, he left us his own water skin. Does he still live? Did he reach the mountains in time? Or are all the wolf riders as drained and dry as this? Take the last drop, beloved. Stay with me, just a while longer. I know where you are going. I know it may be soon. But do you remember? Friend of my body and spirit? <laughs> Remember me? Remember me? Remember? Oh, Fredlands, let me keep you in more than my memories. Give me your soul name. I will give you mine. Take it. Take it now. And we'll be joined beyond death. There is no warmth. No answering light. He is sunk into a dark pit to escape pain and await the end. But I'll end it myself when I finally know there's no hope left. Angry villagers swarm into the high hills where the wolf riders have taken hey, refuge. Get back here! The strenuous climb begins to take its toll. Do not heal her to us! 
and few are able to keep pace with the agile Rayek. Follow me, you laggards! Follow for Lita's sake! <laughs> They're a pretty soft lot. I doubt most of them will make it up this far. Don't want to like me, or die. Maybe, Maybe you better be all strong. No, 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 no killing. Not if we can help, can help it. it. <laughs> Come on, you weaklings! Climb! <sighs> You're a mountain lion among us, Rayek! We, we can't keep up! Then go back to your gardens, dirt diggers! You're no use to me or to me. Huh? I'll <laughs> save her myself! Why, my? You never heard this one? Why would you remember that? Cutter, do you think she knows how to send? She, she might give away her uh, position. Sh 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 no, no. She'd have done it long before now if she could. But one thing's certain, she knows how to scream. Rick pauses, his keen ears straining for the slightest hint of sound. Just one slip, barbarians, and I'll find you. But the raven-haired elf does not know that nothing is as silent as wolf riders in hiding. That is, usually. Oh, she's, she's biting, biting me! me. Uh, well, well, hit her! You can't do that! So, tell her if she doesn't behave, you'll do something awful to her. Ow, like what? Let her wander. Let, uh, listen. I want to take my hand away. But if you scream, well, you won't like what will happen to you. Lita? Lita! I'm coming! Let's what go, now, savage. old wise one? Help! Uh, oh. I think we're gonna have a visitor! <gasps> Lita! Where are you? If you've harmed her, barbarians, I... Calm down, black hair. She's fine. Huh? Very strong, in fact. Rayek! Do something! Release her, land rat, or I'll... No, I don't think so. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jackal, leader of Jackal. I say, calm down. You're not impressing anyone. Let's have to pick Pokemon face. Rayek turns. Yeah. Yeah. And Pike stiffens like a wooden doll. Whoa! This one could do more than send. Pin him down. Cover his eyes. He may have other tricks. Pike, wake up. Lita's indignation gives way to sudden fright. Don't let them kill Rayek! I... please... I'll do anything you ask! Surprised, Cutter gently sets Lita on her feet. <sighs> he gazes into her luminous eyes for a long, silent time, <laughs> enchanted with the beauty he finds there. It is an alien beauty, yet somehow familiar, like a reoccurrence of a forgotten dream. I came to steal water, but I've had my heart stolen instead. Take your <laughs> filthy hands off me, you wild dogs! By the lost dwelling of the High Ones, you'll pay for this! What? Huh? Huh? Eh? How's that? What do you know of the High Ones, Black Hair? Speak! Uh. You dare profane our ancient fathers. We are all descendants of the High Ones, stranger! Can you not see that we are all of one race? I claim no kinship with this vermin! Quiet, Rayek! Who are you, Pale Ones? We are wolf riders from the faraway woodlands. For three days we have journeyed through the burning waste. You lie! No one can cross the desert and live. Desert, huh? So that's what you call it. If it can't be crossed, how did your people get here, black hair? There are too many questions to be answered now. Come down to the village. My father, the Sun Toucher, will know if you are telling the truth. And if you are, we'll help you as we can. And if you are not... From their hiding place on the other side of the hill, Moonshade, Rainsong, Clearbrook, Dewshine, and the children are brought into the strange elven village. Surrounded by curious onlookers, the sullen, wary wolf riders assemble before a gentle yet commanding figure. Call me Sun Toucher. I do not see with my eyes, Wolf Riders, for I gave them to the Almighty Daystar many years ago. 
but the heart can learn to see more deeply than the eye. Let me look at you now. For a moment, there is silence. Then the sun toucher softly smiles. I such a great weariness and hidden sorrow for the loss of all that you have known. Your days have been perilous, yet you have endured them with courage and a ferocious will to survive. Life and all that it means is precious to you, more so because your number is small. <gasps> Friends, in nightfall! Forgive me, Sun Toucher, but we had to leave two of us behind in the desert. One was injured, perhaps dying. I gotta go back for them before it's too late. But you are exhausted, young chieftain, and so is your beast. No matter. If there is a healer among you villagers who dares follow me, let him do so now. I'm going. Wait, Wolfrider. I am a healer. Lita, what are you saying? You can't go with him. I forbid it. You... forbid? Freyak is taken aback as much by his own fierce possessiveness as by Lita's icy stare. He apologizes and offers instead to accompany her, aware that he dares not leave her alone with Cutter. The pale, feral-eyed barbarian has had a strange effect on Thalita, an effect that not even she fully understands. Tam. Tam. Why is that strange word embedded itself in my mind? What does it mean? But Cutter has only one concern now. One thing that drives him on, though his strength is all but spent. Scavenger! Leave us alone! Alone. <laughs> Forever. Ooh! Nightfall! Cutter? Oh, Cutter! <laughs> who, who is she? This baby can help Red Lance. You must trust her. Oh. Lita kneels before the stricken wolf friend, tenderly. She takes his hand in hers, and discovers the unthinkable. <laughs> These wounds were deliberately inflicted! Who could have done such a thing? Humans. The same ones who tried to destroy us with fire. Really? We have legends of such creatures. But I never believed in them. He's looking at their handiwork right now. Silence. This is Rayek. The healing begins. Not a word is spoken, nor a sound uttered, yet great power is invoked as Lita passes into a dreamlike trance. Beneath her gentle, ministering fingers, cracked bones begin to knit, torn tissues mend, and hidden bleeding subsides. Redlance's reawakened heart beats angrily now, staving off death with a fierce will. <gasps> <laughs> I have given him the strength he needs to recover. And you have given me back a tribesman. No words of things can say enough, beautiful No, leader. don't! I... I don't want you to touch me again. Rick? <laughs> that oh, dog... What? <laughs> Red Lance lives thanks to your daughter. I hope that someday she will forgive me for carrying her off like that. I did it without thinking, almost as if I had no choice. Perhaps there was no choice for Wolf Rider. We are the Sun Folk, and ours is a way of peace. We would have freely given you the provisions which you took by force, but though you came to us in violence, you are welcome now to stay here and rest. No one has ever been kind to us before. We thought we were all alone, and the world where life was short and often bitter. Your hardships have caused you to forget what it means to be elves. Come now, all of you. This time, you were brought before the Mother of Memory. Bewildered, but no longer suspicious, the wolf riders follow Sun Toucher to the largest hut in the village. Strange, colorful symbols cover its clay walls, conveying a message of peace and brotherhood. Enter. He is waiting. A slender figure, seated in a misty pool of light, 
beckons the wolf riders forward. Cutter's breath catches in his throat as a low, languid voice breaks the silence. Welcome, my ragged young visitors. Welcome to Sorrow's End. 